agenda item 4.2. Yes, authorize the CRA director to develop a grant agreement in the amount of $500,000 to incentivize the construction of new rental housing as part of a mixed-use development at 708 Chestnut Street. And so this item today is really a two-part item. So step one, if you approve, would be to authorize me to negotiate a grant agreement. And step two would be to bring that grant agreement back with specifics for your approval for this project. So now I'd like to invite up Ray Cassano and Shahab Imrani to explain more about the request, and then I'll follow up after that to answer any questions and with a few more comments. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. So? Let me ask that you all identify yourselves oh, first. I'm Raymond Cassano, and uh, I live at Station Square. Uh, downtown Clearwater. Shahab Amrani, and I live at the water's edge, downtown Clearwater. Um, I think we, we could basically restart. Okay. I got a picture. And I wanted to, we brought our architect with us too, so if you have any questions, he'll be able to answer. So I'm uh, going to give you reasons why we think this project would be successful. I've lived downtown for, I've been in Clearwater for 38 years. I've been downtown forever. I'm experienced. Um, I put Station Square condominiums there, 126 units with two storefronts. I live on top of Station Square in, uh, in the flavor of total I'm on the Downtown Development Board. Shahab is also on the Downtown Development Board. I sit there, he sits there. Um, so we are very interested in downtown getting going. The building that we're talking about, which is this building right here at the bottom left, is sandwiched between two of the four busiest corners of downtown. So you've got Fort Harrison, Myrtle, Chestnut Court, and we're right in the middle of those. It's one of the least attractive buildings and one of the buildings that needs the most improvement. The homeless are using it to live. I get code people calling me from the city, get that stuff out of there, clean it up, pick up the trash on a constant basis. I know that costs some money for them to keep doing that. And there's a lot of other people making messes around the property because it's just been sitting there like that for many years. Most of the people coming from the beach which is the one-way chestnut from the beach. They're not from Clearwater, and they see this building, and I think it's a bad public relations for the city of Clearwater, especially for downtown. This improvement will move some of the benefits that we work with the Downtown Development Board from Cleveland to the southern border of the downtown zone. So that's something we've talked about at the Downtown Development Board hey, let's get not all the money done on Cleveland, let's spread it around. To, so this will help that because I'm right on the southern border, this building. I think it'll be an igniter for more development in the area. Because that area is starting to move, but I think a nice $3 million project will not hurt. I think it will help. The incentive we're asking for will allow us to put a third floor on there Here's the, um, on the, to the right, it can put a third floor on the property or help us buy that out parcel, which you see my finger right there, which is for sale, and we can add more parking for the project, so that, that will occur if we get the incentive. And this is what the building will look like if we get the incentive and get done. So it'll be one of the nicer buildings downtown. Uh, it'll take almost $3 million to make it look like that. And half the building will be brand new. And the Quonset Hut part, that's the worst part, will be taken down for, for the parking lot. So it'll, it'll just, just disappear. The project will add 14 apartments, four stores, and 17 more parking spaces downtown. 
At full restoration, this will be one of the most aesthetic buildings downtown. The new building will reduce the toxicity levels, which are probably present in this very old building. Downtown near the water and new waterfront development has very few apartments for rent. You got the Nolan quite a ways away, but I mean, downtown there really isn't many apartments. I have two storefronts in my real estate company, and most of the people coming in, do you have an apartment for rent? Do you have an apartment for rent? And I don't. So I got a condo for sale. No, no, we want one for rent. So this will really help downtown in that area. I think it'll cause more people to shop downtown, visit stores. I told uh, Amanda we put a little art gallery in there, and that I think it'll cause a little more body traffic and uh, visit the tenants that will be living in the 14 apartments. Currently, the building is unoccupiable, which causes the police department to spend more money supervising it. Some guy drove into the window. I mean, actually drove his car into the window. We had to board it up. Got a call from the police department. A bunch of teenagers got in one night and had a rave party. And of course, the police called me, and they had to handle it. So I think it'll help the cost of supervising it with the code department and the police department save some money if it's a better building and it's lit and it's functioning. The project will supply many jobs and services for the 18 months it's under construction. And of course there'll be a large increase in real estate taxes. The 14 new tenants will aid the stores and restaurants downtown. So there's my points on why I think we should do this and why we need the incentive. I asked for 750000 but Amanda cut it down to five hundred. Any questions so far? I did do a $45 million project, so I am experienced. And uh, you're going to ask about our funding sources. We have purchased the land in cash. We owe no money on it. We've got a loan from Valley Bank of $750,000, which can be upgraded to a million dollars. And we are capable of getting another loan if needed. So it's not one of those situations where the building will sit there waiting for funding. And if you guys remember right, that Station Square went up pretty fast. <clears throat> Probably faster than just about anything else downtown. That's what we want to do. We want to have start to finish 12 to 18 months done. The quicker we get the okay on the money, the quicker we'll start. And if we don't get the incentive, we may just block the building out and give it to a one-person uh, tenant. It would still get remodeled. It wouldn't benefit downtown as much. And I do have a tenant that will take the building if it just make a shell out of it. They'll finish it. Any questions? Go ahead and finish. I think, I think I'm done. <laughs> I brought some samples, some of the works uh, that I've done elsewhere. If interested, I could show you some pictures. Our motto in our company is improve people's lives. And even though we deal with taxes, we improve people's lives. And <clears throat> as a tax firm, it's amazing how many times we get love notes of how wonderful you guys help in my life. And that will prove that basically for our staff, that basically the environment they work in, which is spend most of the time in, it's a, a wonderful space. Is there anywhere I can put in a USB? <clears throat> if interested to see, otherwise it's okay. Any, any questions? Mr. Well, Hamilton. There's a, in, in the paperwork here, it says, um, you know, given today's market, it's, difficult to build housing without government assistance or government uh, participating in the funding. My question is, when these apartments are built, are they going to be market rate or are they going to be subsidized? Um, is there going to be, is, are they going to be subsidized um, at a subsidized level? Since it's government going in, is there, is there relief in the, in the rent? Well, they won't be very expensive because there'll be a constant parking situation. So it will be, it won't be subsidized rental, but it won't be high market either. Because we're not going they're not going to have assigned parking spaces, so they'll be fighting every night for a parking spot. 
So, so I think that if um, right now, since they're not a housing authority, they haven't set a target like 80% AMI or 120% AMI. Um, the rates that we've talked about so far would be slightly less than the Nolan. Um, you know, and that'll be contingent on what the final construction costs are, but by the nature that they're smaller and they have no amenities, they're going to be less expensive than the Nolan or Apex 1100. If you wanted to set a target at a certain AMI, I mean, I think workforce is between 80, is 80 and 120 percent. That's certainly something that we could bring forward in the negotiations. But as of today, they, since they're not a housing authority, they have not proposed a cap, and, and this is why we're having this conversation now to talk about what would be important to the trustees as part of the incentive. And I'm trying to understand the uh, property to the west. You do not own that for the present time. I think, well, no, that's an out parcel. The person that owns the entire block except for our building uh i'm his agent real estate agent right and he leases two walgreens and we have a hard time getting that out parcel sold because number one walgreens has to agree to it so if it's any coca-cola or ice cream no because they sell that so it almost has to be a bank and there's not enough room on that out parcel for a drive-through so it's pretty much dead space, which would be perfect for us for more parking. Okay. But well, really what about um, you're providing the? Do you have any idea of what your four business? I'm, I'm looking at the parking of it. I mean, 17 spaces, 14 apartments. That leaves three parking spaces for four businesses. At, at, the well, math is, is, I'm having a hard time with the math on that. This is why the incentive we're asking, because we need to get that other piece. The good news is most of the people in the apartments will not Excuse, excuse me one second. Please let me ask if you have a cell phone or other device to get, that goes off to silence it. Okay. Most of the people in the apartments will be gone during the day when the stores need it, and then when the stores close at 5 or 6, that's when the apartments will have a greater use. So it's going to be somewhat of a nice situation on the shared. I have a good relationship with Walgreens, and I think I'm going to be able, if you look at Walgreens, they have this little section by my, our building that is parking that doesn't get used very much. I'm going to try and offer them a shared situation. You can use mine during the day, and we can use theirs, and I think I, think I can get that done, which will help the parking situation. But it'll be 17 new spaces downtown, which will help. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, yeah, man, I'm sorry, Mr. Pogler. Thank you, sir. I'm not quite understanding the funding, and the application seems to be um, the old application before you were requested to reduce the, the amount to 500000 Um So I'm not understanding. It's, the whole project is $3 million or $3.6 million? We paid seven fifty for the land. And it's going to cost around $2.9 million to do that. So we're looking at $3.6 million total without that out parcel. In my mind, you don't, I mean, I, I wouldn't count the money you spent to approve, to, to buy the property. Right. So the amount of project, as far as I'm concerned in looking at it, is two point nine. So if two point nine, you're requesting five hundred. dollars where is even at 2.9? Where is the rest of the money coming from? I know you said you have $750,000 uh, pre a loan from Valley that could be uh, raised to a million. That could be raised to a million. So, and if we give you five, that's 1.5. So you're still short several hundred. Th yeah, you're still short a lot of money. Where is that coming from? Well, we have credit lines we can use. That won't be a problem. Shahab's uh, company in Oregon is the number one and the number three best place to work in the entire state. I mean, he's uh, done an amazing job. And when we go to the bank, they pretty much roll the carpet out for us. I would have just, and I'm not doubting the success of either Station Square or, or Mr. M what you have done. I just would have liked to have seen more detail in the numbers 
um, it really works so that we understand it better. It just seems, it seems, the application seems just a little incomplete. Well, and this is part of why it's a two-step process, right? Because if the trustees aren't supportive of encumbering this amount of money and this concept and going forward, then we don't, you know, we're not going to initiate getting into the details of the conversation, right, with getting permits, construction timeline, all the letters from the banks for the sources of funding, right? That, that's a lot of time and effort if there's not initial support for the, for the idea. Well, I think my support would have been much stronger had we had the benefit of, of the, more of the details. For instance, like Councilmember Hamilton said, what are going to be the, is, so this 500,000, this is, has nothing to do with food and beverage, but yet if it's incentivizing the whole project, it would be nice to know what the plan is for the four retail spaces at the bottom. I mean, it didn't sound like I was adhering any detail in that regard. No, at well. this time, they don't have tenants for the four retail spaces. If they don't receive the incentive, they can create a shell space, and I believe you have a medical office Yes, United Health will take it as a shell. Um, they have already 20-year lease. I don't know if it will benefit downtown that much, but we would just shell it. It would mm -hmm. cost quite a bit, but not anywhere near $3 million, and they would take it and fix out the interior. Right. Um, the CRA's interest in the incentive is the housing. So, frankly, for the bottom floor, whether it's office, retail, it, the, you, any commercial use is fine. We're really interested in the housing unit and the apartment housing units. Do you have concern in regards to the parking, for instance, 14 units, 17 spots, four retail spaces? Now, you guys know that I'm well, the person who lived without a car for four years, right? So I, I will say this. I think that this is a perfect setup for shared use, as Mr. Cassano described. Most people living in these apartments are going to go to work during the day, and those spaces are going to be open. The uses that they're going to have, I don't think that we're going to see four retail uses. I think we'll see, given our current market, we might have one in there or maybe one gallery, so they're going to have some parking during the day, not really need parking at night. I think it's going to be possible to get in a shared agreement with Walgreens, and there's a lot of parking on that site. Um, so the parking does not concern me. Um, I also think with the size and what the price point will end up being, you might attract more people who only have one car or no car. It's extremely close to transit and to the trail. Um, so that being said, I, I think that they do need to figure out some shared parking um, for sure, but I'm not, I'm not concerned. And remember, our zoning ordinance for commercial uses does not require parking. Right. Any other Thank questions, questions? Yeah. Mr. Condon? Um, it may be in there, and it, it didn't see it. What size units uh, are you anticipating? Uh, the smallest one, I think, is going to be a couple studios at 6 to 650, and the largest one will be around 1,000, two-bedroom, 1,000, 1,100. There's no gym, there's no pool, there's no clubhouse, so we are going to offer discounted rates. We're going to also offer discounted rent someone that doesn't have a vehicle, like a bicycle or something, but that close to the beach, that close to the new uh, bus station, which is right across the street, and two blocks from the other bus station. Uh, and a lot of the people that work downtown could live there, so we may, we're businessmen, so we've got to reduce the rent to fill it, and it won't be... Believe me, it won't be five-star rent. Bread and butter apartments. Yeah. yeah. Waitress that works at the new restaurants, cooks. Uh, it's going to really help downtown. And, and aesthetically, you know, um, we, need, we need to get downtown ignited, and I think this is really going to help. It's not going to be a big money maker. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. I got comments when you get there. Uh, how long have you owned that property? Two years. Mm, about because it has been vacant for such a long time. Well, I we donated to the Haiti project for the Haiti. Uh, they had the earthquake and everything, mm -hmm. so they're in it, and we don't charge them rent, and they kind of watch it for us, and they're staying there longer now because of the problems we've had. Um, um, I, I, I think my problem is that I heard repeatedly say we can get the money, for, we have great credit from the banks. So if you've got that kind of credit and, and, you know, support from the banks that you can get the money, why are you coming to the city? Because the project doesn't make sense economically without the incentive. We'd have to reduce...
the look and the size of the place, and you wouldn't like it as well. Don't like what's there. Oh, I and know. It's, and it's, it's been there for years. Yeah, well, we want to change um, that. We want to know, change that. It, it'll be better. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the retail space and that you developed Station Square, but the retail space at Station Square is largely empty, and it's uh, been that way for years too, right? Sir, the one that I own, that we own in Station Square, the west side, is completely full. We have That's a $2 million project that has 22 suites, and there's only two vacancies. And we that's, used that as storage. And, and how much, what, what kind of incentive did you get for the city for that? Well, we didn't need to because the guy that put a lot of the money in it went broke, and we came in, and it was kind of favorable for us to take over. So, but we put a lot of money and time in it, and it's, it's really nice. If you want to see it, you would be very impressed. It's almost the quality of the ring at one-third the cost, and it's on the ground floor. And we've got a lot of diversity of people in there. We've got offices, we've got a holistic vet, we've got a weight loss, we've got a spray tan, we've got three uh, hairdressers. We've got, it's really helping downtown. Uh, and so the west side, which includes the uh, outdoor area that isn't the park that we own, is almost completely full. And if need be, we'll do this thing on the empty one. But we need to get this one done first. Once this is done, we can continue because we want downtown. I've been here 38 years. I want downtown to start moving. And I think we can get it done. We can get, at least get it started. And you know how that works. You can get a little bit going and other people come in and... You know, I've even got uh, people interested in the City Hall project that you'll be seeing from in about six months that you're going to be very happy about. So this is our purpose. Our purpose really isn't money, even though we're our business I mean, We need money as an energy, as a tool. But, you know, I live here. I love it here. Uh, a lot of my family have moved to Florida. Any, any other questions? Okay. Is there a motion? Uh, move approval of uh, agenda item uh, 4.2. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve agenda item 4.2. Anybody from the public to speak to this motion? Comments, Council? Mr. Albright. I love this project. This is, I think, a best use of the CRA money. But listen, this whole block a couple of years ago it was like a third world country. And I've, I, I remember when this place was a, it was a furniture store. I don't know how many years, two decades ago? I mean, a long time ago. Three, 30 years ago. Thank you. So I think having a mixed use with apartments is just what downtown needs. I think the more people we can get down here, the better. Um, this sounds like it's just the kind of project, and I'm glad that we're doing something constructive. Uh, it doesn't seem like, uh, at least to me, that we've really tried with the CRA money to get things moving downtown, right on Cleveland Street. This is still in the CRA, and it's, it is. It's part of the people coming from the beach. It's the gateway. It's people leaving the beach, and I'm so glad that we have something a little better looking on the other side, on Court Street, going to the beach now. So I am uh, fully on board. I got this, uh, I studied this pack. It all came in my package before the meeting, so I got versed in going through everything on it, and it uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Mr. Public. Uh, comment, and based on Councilmember Albright's comments, it, it kind of also spawned a question that I would have for the applicant. The, the money that you're requesting I don't, I don't deny it's not a project that has value for that corridor. But that money that you're requesting, you weren't really clear either. Would it be for the development of that parcel, that project, or is it to buy the parking lot for additional parking? It's for the development, but we could use some of that to buy more parking. I, my recommendation is that it's restricted to the housing construction. That's, that's what the CRA money is to be used for. But um, if they so don't get, I'm not, I apologize for interrupting, but if they don't get that parking lot, 
Do they still have 17 parking spots then? Yes. Oh, yes. Mark down again. Sir. Sir, could you? So, so right now, the building, there's a, a curved dome, and there's a one-story kind of addition to the rear of the building. They are removing that. That is a 17-space parking lot. So that's, that's where the parking lot comes from. It's land that they already own. Well, so is the, because you mentioned it, they're, they're actually trying, considering acquiring the additional property. So that would, in fact, give them much more parking, which wasn't discussed at all, if I'm correct. Correct. So, and this is, this is another reason for the two-step process, right, and going through to refine the details. It, it's my recommendation to the CRA trustees that we don't worry whether or not they get that additional parking. Our interest is to reduce the cost to allow them to build housing units. If they want to raise additional funds to build, buy additional land and build additional parking, they can do that. If you want to make that a condition of the approval when we come back, you could. My recommendation is just to focus on the 17 parking spaces and 14 units. I believe that is adequate. If you wanted to tie approval on contingency on buying additional land and getting more parking, you certainly could. We could do that. Is that, so that spurs another question, is that parking lot that they're considering that they brought up, um, is that large enough for another development or would in your consideration be a valuable piece of acquisition for that project because now depending on what type of retail or in our current environment the most valuable use for that site unfortunately is parking right if, if we had more people downtown in higher density then you could probably have a standalone retailer restaurant with no parking that would be solely dependent on foot traffic but there's not enough space for a drive-through there's not enough space for another building and parking so it really is an out parcel right well, so then here's just another concept. That is a contiguous parking lot to this project. With that contiguous parking lot and this blighted building, that does have the potential with no height restrictions to be a major project for downtown in that corridor, given the fact that possible another developer some other time. Is that, is that not true also? I love to dream big as well, but I don't own that property, so I'm not proposing right. to tell okay. them how to develop it. <laughs> That's, Mr. Kind of, you know, I'm looking forward to step two, uh, but I'm also in favor of uh, uh, granting the request. Uh, and I, I like the fact that we're, we're putting in um, a little bit lower cost housing uh, in, down, in the downtown area. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Again, this is drummed up a, a mathematical question for me, and, and Ray may need, be, be the one that needs to answer it. So, Ray, I don't know if you need to come back up or not. But in the $3.6 million budget to build the total concept, does that include the acquisition of the additional parking? No. And totally uh, keep you up to date on it, he doesn't want to sell it to us. So this guy is extraordinarily wealthy. Uh, he gets big rent from Walgreens. He has a lot of them across the country. And every time I talk to him, he says, I don't ever sell. So it's been quite a, my sign's on it to build, you know, to build a suit. I've only had one inquiry in the last three years, two years. Because, uh, I mean, I, I, I like the concept. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm a lot more comfortable if you have that additional parking. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't understand the reason but between, I mean, I own property myself, but I mean, if it makes sense to sell it, or do, does it make sense to hold on to it because you really can't do anything to it, right. um, I, I don't understand that, but um, I, I'm afraid, you know, I would, I like the idea of making it contingent, the, the 500000 contingent on getting that property, but if the property does, is just not available because the owner refuses to sell, I don't want that to be to impede the project itself. So uh, I will, I'm going to be voting in favor of this, but um, you know, if, if, I can, if I can talk to the, the owner and try, and try and convince him to to sell that piece, you know, just because it 
make you know I, I think it, it it helps everybody um, I can assure you that I will not stop trying to get that parcel <coughs> and I think uh, I think I'll get the job done I actually maintain it and so I'm in constant communication with the agent for the owner well, Council, I, I, I'm a little uncomfortable uh, with this project. I think there's too many unanswered questions that are still out there. And with all due respect, paying $500,000 for 14 apartment units uh, really isn't going to move the needle on people coming into downtown Clearwater. Uh, Those storefronts. It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not convinced that you're going to be able to do that, given your track record, despite what you're saying, sir. Uh, How's that? Sir, we're not going to get into a debate. I have the floor now. I'm not asking any questions. You may sit down. Uh, we're paying $500,000 for 14 apartments. We don't know what the rent's going to be on those apartments. Uh, we're not sure it's going to help the foot traffic in, in downtown. And uh, we, we don't know about the parking situation. I think some more work needs to get done in, in Council be given, you know, the trustees be given more information before we go forward in approving this. Motion has been made and seconded oh, to. Well, wait, I'm sorry, Ms. Aiken? Now, as I understand it, if you pass this motion, what you're really approving, you're not approving the project. You are authorizing um, negotiation. Right. So you still have an opportunity when it comes back to either approve or not approve, to approve the agreement as recommended by staff or not. Um, so this is merely authorization to go forward with negotiation and to some extent getting direction from you about what you would like to see in that. And I think you have given some suggestions and direction. And Ms. Thompson has But, but they can still negotiate and, and yes. whether we approve this or not. Yes. However, if, if council vote, excuse me, if the trustees vote against at this point, there's really no reason for us to continue negotiations. So this is really a request to negotiate. And if you don't wish us to negotiate with them, then we won't. If you're not interested in this project, um, then we won't go forward with that. And if you are, then we, yeah, will, we will take all these notes. Well, what was the step two then that you were talking about? So step two would be to bring forward the grant agreement with with approved, you know, zoning approved plans, with all the financing laid out, with the construction timeline with more information as you're asking regarding foot traffic, right, this or that. Um, you know, obviously we need something that's zoning compliant. We want to think through all those things. I, I don't want to get ahead of the trustees, right? So I'm, I'm not going to start down a path with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right, without knowing where we're sitting and having authorization to, to do so. Okay. Ms. Aiken's comment sort of changed the... No. <clears throat> A little bit. Not for me, Mayor. This yeah. this was sloppy, incomplete, and I'm a dream bigger. So I think you know which direction I'm going to go. <clears throat> and there's a new council <clears throat> going to be here in a month. So I'm not going to vote to bind them to a project that I'm not comfortable with as yeah. well. Just to clarify, it's not binding. It's not binding. But you are giving direction well, it's, that, the I understand. that the trustees yeah. want us to move forward. But it, and this is for everyone, it is not binding. This is direction to negotiate. Just want to make sure our applicants understand that, and they do. Okay. So, what have you gathered from us before we vote, Ms. Thompson? Yes. So, I have a couple of notes. Um, one, clear about the total project cost, whether it includes land acquisition or not for additional parking, those sources of financing a timeline, what types of uses will be used on the ground floor, how we think it will influence, you know, perception or foot traffic, right, the, the impact that we anticipate it will have on, on downtown. Okay. Uh, I, I'm still uncomfortable with the 500,000 for 14 units. 
Right, and, and although the housing is the incentive part, the whole building will be redone. Right, so I mean, it is a $2.9 million construction project. And, and then clarify for us again, and, and I apologize, council or trustees, but if we don't approve this, then reference was made to United Healthcare coming in. So t today, and I don't know that it's United Healthcare, but if you look at the building today, um, for it to be viable, they're going to have to remove the rear half and build some more parking because right now they just have the sh strip of a couple spaces in front of the building. If they touch that building, right, over a certain amount, they're going to have to meet our downtown design standards, which means they're going to have to bring that building up to the street, right? And that's probably, I don't know that it's a key corner. I assume it is, right? So you have to have a certain amount of openness with the windows, the transparency. So you're looking at a, a lot of money, right, to bring that building up to our code. They're going to have to provide for parking. And for them to spend a minimum amount of money but get a viable use in there, it's going to be medical office or some kind of generic office, right? Insurance, tax preparation, which doesn't meet any of our downtown revitalization goals. It's not bad. It's an improvement. But that's not going to generate foot traffic. That's not providing housing. And if they go up a floor, they could put four units on top of that new footprint that they're, they're going to have to build, which, again, that's not bad. That's what they can do based on the rents that they could generate today, right? The uses and the rents that they could generate today. That's what they can do with the funding that they have. Um, if we give the incentive, then that allows them to build more housing units. So, uh, so that's the difference. The difference is they can still improve the building. It's just going to be a use that provides no or less housing and does not generate as much pedestrian foot traffic or provide those services. So, so that's the trade-off, right? The incentive is to get a more intense use that aligns with the downtown plan. So I get, I mean, where I'm coming from, where I'm coming from after all this is, I am voting yes to continue the negotiation, and but with full, you know, right to <laughs> reserving the right to. Uh, um, not vote in favor of it if we don't, you know, see, but hopefully the applicant will be able to come forward and say, look, we're going to be able to get that, we're going to, we've, we've secured the other property, we've got this, we've, we've, we're, you know, we're ready to roll, and uh, that'd be great news, but uh, I'm willing to let it continue to see where, the, where we can get on the next step. I, I, I'm going to agree with you, Mr. Hamilton. I, I am not comfortable with what you're presenting. Okay? I'm not comfortable giving $500,000 for 14 apartment units. I think that's, you know. So what's your number? It's not going to be mine to come up with, but it certainly wouldn't be. You know. Uh, I, 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 but I think it, it, it's too big, you know, given what they said about we've got these lines of credits and we can get all this money, you know, we're not the United Way. Do five stories, do you ten know? stories. Yeah. Why, why limit yourself to yeah. three? I just... So, uh, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Motion carries four to one with uh, Mr. Poglase in opposition.